Hit the button too fast. It stopped when it started. Oh, I have to give permission, don't I? Let's see. Well, I think we're good. Like so I'm going to do a little. So, you know, when we're doing these, uh, well, we're doing these, uh, when we're doing these recordings, we're actually doing the recording for the radio show, but we're recording for Zoom so people can see it because a lot of times I hear that the most fun of a show for the host or for the guests was actually stuff we did in between. So this is just a way to try and capture that. Unfortunately, folks, today there are no guests, <laughs> but I wanted to explain to that. So sometimes when we're starting a session, you might hear some part of the intro, part not as it comes through on that, but that's just because it's being recorded uh, in the radio station and not not on this. So if it sounds kind of funky on that, that's just the way it is uh, because Dan is into video and um, he likes it this way. So that's uh, exactly, uh, yeah, uh, Dan the man. So um, that's the way we do it. And I just want to, you know, put that out there, share some stuff. This is the uh, 15th, right? So show this for the show 15th. Out the 15th. So on the 22nd, we still have the big cleanup on aisle one and 09. And 09 uh, cleanup. D14 zone. All right. And then next week, um, I'm recording at Leitner, Leitner Designs in Corona. So we have that down for Tuesday, right? Uh, something like that. See, they're always on top of things. I can, I can always count on you to have it. Let me look on my calendar. Yeah. All right. So it is. I just want to make sure I'm there. I just want to make sure you're there. What time? Because I didn't get on my calendar. I believe it's 11. So we'll work on that. We'll work on that after the show. Okay, I don't have it on here, and I have something else at 11. <sighs> it's been scheduled for a long time. This is what I deal with. Okay. I remember you talking about it. It's all right. We'll deal with that after the show. All right. All right. You ready? Yes. We'll, we'll figure it out. That's the broken up intro. Good, bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Hello, folks. Welcome to another edition of Firing Line Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman. We're coming to you from Prescott, Arizona this morning here. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So I understand why people are leaving California in droves because there are amazing places out here and uh, Prescott, Arizona is one. If you're watching along on a YouTube channel or, or our Gab channel, and you're seeing the video on this, you'll see that I'm in a, I'm in a living room right now because we're still building out the offices here in Prescott. And next to me or behind me, I should say, as I set to move to the side here is a, a very unhappy elk. Um, he's supposed to be on the wall up here. But as I tried to put him up there, my wife and I almost had a hunting accident, which wouldn't have fared out very well for her. So um, we're waiting for, for backup reinforcements. That's why you have a, what we, what we affectionately call here a floor mount. So it's a new, it's a new style for elk. It's called the floor mount. You just leave them on the floor um, because you can't get them 10 foot up in the air to, to hang on the rafter. So uh, anyway, that's a, that's our description of what we've got going on out here. But Prescott's absolutely beautiful. Uh, loving it. We're going to open an office for my business out here. So I'll be split time between California and Prescott and uh, full time working, but back and forth between the two offices uh, until everything gets established on that. So excited about that. And again, that's Cornerstone Christian Wealth Management. That's uh, where you need to go. So this week is the 15th following weekend. Next week, if you haven't done it already, please make plans to go to the N1N09 cleanup day. D14 zone is the page on Facebook. And George Willoughby, we've had him on the show. We've talked about it last week again also. George Willoughby is organizing this to do a major cleanup. And it's extremely important that we as shooters police ourselves, 
are proactive in the cleanup portion because if the Sierra Club was out there cleaning this up, they would use all the publicity in the world they could to get the shooting areas shut down. We're safe because they don't like to do cleanup. But it's an opportunity that would make the Second Amendment community look bad, even though we know it's not the Second Amendment community that's doing it. It's jerks, it's criminals, and it's people who should be fined for everything they leave behind. Uh, though I have zero, in case you couldn't hear it in my voice, I have zero tolerance for those people who do such stupid things as shoot toilets and leave them out there, or television sets, or just moronic glass. I got an idea, let's drink beer and shoot the bottles. Anyway, those are not the Second Amendment crowd. There's not, they're not my listeners, so I can offend them all I want. Um, we only have good people listen to my show. So it's important that we get involved in that. And George Willoughby, you can get a hold of him on his Facebook page through the D14 zone. George Willoughby's uh, charging that. I think I've said his name six times now, in case you haven't caught it. That's the guy you want to get in charge with. Uh, 1N09, it's going to be at 8 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, next Saturday, one week from today, 8 a.m., off of Highway 330. You catch that just north of, of San Bernardino, where the 210 uh, bends right there in the middle of San Bernardino Highland area, take the 330 north into the mountains, about seven to nine miles, something in that range. And there's a 330 cutoff and it'll be on your right hand side. You'll come up a long grade as the road bends to your left, the cutoffs on your right. It's a really neat area. It's too bad we have to go out there and clean it up, but I'm glad that we've got a crew out there that's doing it. And again, hats off to you folks, D14 hunters who care about the land and are doing the right thing and getting out there spending their Saturday to clean up someone else's mess. So God bless you guys for that. I think I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to make sure we donate some cutting edge bullets out there. These are all guys who hunt the D14 zone, which in California, we have to have uh, lead free options. And after shooting many of the different lead free options from the GMX or the, uh, um, the EL, I forget what Nosler's word, E tip for Nosler or, or the Barnes, you know, the cutting edge bullets I've found to be hands down the best for terminal performance, uh, accuracy, long range consistent BCs. They're just, they've been the best. So I'm going to donate some, bo some boxes out there. We'll see which calibers guys want. And just as a, as a thank you for them for actually doing that. And so it'll be the hunting calibers, anything from 25 out six or 25 caliber, six fives, two seventies, seven millimeter, 30 caliber. I'll, I'll get a couple of boxes of those going out there for them. And uh, George and the guys can decide who worked the hardest, who does some reloading and, and, uh, gets a fantastic little uh, gift for that. So again, let's talk about that for next week. And uh, I hope you all send me pictures and let me know what's going on out there. I am out of town that weekend, unfortunately. Or I would have been there. Okay, so this week I am going to do a show on something that is very popular. And it's kind of funny that I'm deciding to do this show because it hasn't been a cartridge that I've owned until recently. What's really weird about that is it's a cartridge that's been around for about 115, 616 years. Anyway, we're going to talk about the 30 out six, the venerable 30 out six. So, uh, what what is it? Where did it come from? What can it do? And why, in the name of all things that are so good, is it getting such a bad rap lately? I just think it's an important thing. If you saw the video of my last show on YouTube or uh, on Gab, you'll notice I, I had a little conversation with Sean Gibbs. And that kind of what got me going on this is I think we need to clear the air and talk about some facts when it comes to firearms, ballistics, advertising, marketing, articles, web pages, blogs. It's like, okay, this, there's a lot of hoopla out there. And I understand that people want to sell more firearms or different cartridges or different calibers. That's, that's great. But I just wanted people to be honest in their dealings. And so let's talk about the 30 out six, 30 out six right now. has been a little bit under the weather. People think of it as your grandfather's gun. All right. 
Uh, it was cutting edge in the early 1900s. It really was. And it started off as a military cartridge, 30 at six Springfield, actually started off as a 3003. So 30 03. Um, it's called a 30 aught six, though. It's not called a 3006 or 30 06. It's called a 30 aught six. If you see it written out, it's 30 06. 30 ought six. That's what it's called. Please don't show up and say, I want a 3006 or a 30 06. It just, no, don't. I'm helping you here. This is giving you some street cred. It's 30 ought six, not 30 06. There are other things you could say differently, but don't do that one. It's one of my pet peeves. It's almost like, it's almost like driving a Prius in the fast lane too slowly. You know, it's, it's really bad. So don't do that. Don't do either of those two. It's 30 out six. That's a proper name for it. it. It began as a military cartridge. The first version of it came out in 1903. It had a very, very large round nose bullet, like 220 grains. The military has always been slow to adopt new firearm technology. They still are. So the 30, they, they were looking to try and shoot a 220 grain round nose bullet out of a, out of a uh, modern cartridge. At that point in time, the gunpowder you used was cordite. It was very dirty. It caused a lot of throat erosion and they, they couldn't keep the velocities they wanted on those big 220 grain bullets in that style cartridge. So without destroying the guns, so they, they eventually they gave it up and they came up with a Spitzer bullet. Now the Germans had invented this and they saw it in the seven by 57s that were used in, uh, in the, the Cuban war conflict, whatever, Spanish American war, Cuban conflict. Um, the Spaniards and the Germans over there had the seven by 57s, which is a seven millimeter, a modern cartridge, um, it was in a repeating rifle. It was faster. It was flatter. It was more accurate. And it caused a lot of issues for uh, the Americans up there. So Teddy Roosevelt, who was in that, who went into that conflict, is now the president at this point in time. And so they're designing that they want to get a Spitzer bullet for the 30 out 6 And they came up with a 150-grain Spitzer bullet. Now, that changed everything because... At that point in time, they could load it about 27, 2,800 feet a second with a 150 grain bullet. It had a better profile, so it, it got better gas mileage, if you will, through the air. Better profile, meaning it was more efficient when it hit the air, so you could shoot farther with it and have more velocity and impact downrange. And as a military cartridge, that's obviously what you'd like to do. So that began in the uh, 03A3 rifle. Very popular rifle. Lots of people have the Springfield 03A3. They were made in as the main battle rifle for World War I. They continued um, production of those, I think, into the late 40s. And then they kind of stopped producing them. But the uh, 03A3 is, a, is your classic World War I rifle. You see an American soldier holding a gun that's like mostly wood from top to the end. That's the 03A3. Uh, many, many manufacturers made them from typewriter companies to Remington to Springfield to, you know, all these different companies made, made them so they could have different manufacturer stamps, but it's a great rifle built off of a Mauser style action. Mauser, you have to kind of grab one to look at it because it's a little hard to describe on, on air, but a Mauser action has a, uh, what's called controlled feed. When you go to load it out of the magazine and you push your bolt forward on a bolt action rifle, it grabs the back of the shell. It doesn't just push it forward. It grabs it and controls it all the way in. And when it extracts it, it pulls it all the way out too. So a lot of people love the Mauser actions. I like them just because they're so usually so smooth. They just a uh, lapped, you know, metal on metal. It's, it's that nice. It's almost like it's a glass action. And so it just really is smooth and it's artistic on that. So that's pretty good. We're going to talk about uh, the 30 out six when we come back here. This is Philip Naiman, Firing Line Radio Show. We'll be right back after this. About a minute. Really? 
Cool. Maybe 15 or something like that. So we'll go 9, 9.30 on this one. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened because apparently I will figure it out. <laughs> Maybe I can move Opal, get to Opal to record later. Oh. All right. Oh, I got to hit over here. This is over my pager. Here we go. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. See this? This is my boomstick. Hey, folks, welcome back to Firing Mind Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman. You know that. Every week, we're going to talk about our sponsors, and one of our great sponsors out there is Bullseye Sports Guns and Ammo in Riverside, between Arlington and Central, off of Brockton at the Brockton Arcade. Anyway, that's where you're going to find him. Uh, uh, big, uh, big Vince is down there, and we're talking about 30 out six. So this is the 30 out six show. Head on down there, say Vince. It's about time I bought myself a 30 out six. He's going to show you what they have. They probably have some, some special guns in there on consignment. Anyway, anything you need, Second Amendment related, Bullseye Sports Guns and Ammo in Riverside is a show you need, shop you need to go to and get yourself some training. They've uh, got some excellent training. Mike Foley, uh, Mike Connolly, they all do some great training out there. Uh, you need to get your CCW uh, class done. They have processes for that too. So check them out. Bullseye Sports Guns and Ammo in Riverside. 951-823-0211. 951-823-0211. Bullseyesport.com. So talking about, you know, talking about sponsors out there, there's a lot of folks out here that support this show that I really want to, to point out to you folks. CCW Safe. You know, you've heard their commercials. If you have, well, I shouldn't say if you have, Pretty much everybody needs to look at their coverage because even if you do not have a CCW, they have a protection plan for your home. If you have to defend your life or the life of your loved ones uh, at your home, they have an option that can help you with legal fees. So it's extremely important. It's not only for CCW carriers in California. It's also for anybody who has to use self-defense to defend their life, whether it's by their hand or a frying pan, whatever you needed to do to get the bad guy uh, away from you, CCW Safe helps you with that. So it's different from a lot of other plans out there. Uh, unlimited, they have unlimited uh, liability coverage, not liability coverage, unlimited civil um, protection and unlimited criminal defense uh, coverage. So very, very important. If you saw what happened with the Kyle Rittenhouse um, trial, you know that it's extremely important you have good representation. And of course, Cutting Edge Bullets, we talked a little bit about them before. Cutting Edge Bullets, we're going to talk about proof research as we go in here uh, a little bit longer on this on this podcast. But we have some absolutely fantastic uh, AccuTac, MagLite. Um, you need to refinance your home, go check out Big Ed Hoffman at Planet Home Lending. He will help you out with that. So Folks, let's move on here. I want to keep talking about the 30 out six. We're talking about the basic rifle that started off in, which was the Springfield 03A3. Now, after World War I, there were a lot of those in surplus. And so a lot of guys bought them, people bought them for very cheap from the government, and they sporterized them. So they would take off the giant wooden stock that it came with with a four end guard and so forth and they would create their own and so there's a lot of these if you, you can see them online on gun broker or something a lot of guys made some customized stocks and it's kind of neat because it's a piece of history you know it's a, it's a beautiful rifle and they made their own stocks in their own garages and you, you know now their grandsons are selling them or something like that. But uh, there's some really neat things out there. But the 30 out six became extremely popular because as a hunting round, it was pretty much unparalleled at that point in time. You had a platform that was inexpensive to buy. You could sporterize it and do whatever you wanted to uh, for a hunting rifle. So the O3A3 really brought that along and made it a very accessible round, not to mention the performance beat everything in that category. So 30 out six became the battle, the battle cartridge for World War II with the M1 Garand. So the M1 Garand is a semi-automatic. If you've watched Private Ryan, you've seen an M1 Garand. If you're new to the show, um, 
but it's a gas operated semi-automatic rifle. And so it is very finicky on the style of 30-06 ammunition that it uses. You can't just grab a box of Remington core locks, shove them in a grand and expect it to work for very long. So there's some, there, there are some things you need to know about that. There are, if you have a grand, you should know that there's grand specific ammunition. It should only be shot in a grand. You can shoot it in a regular bolt action rifle, but it's a waste. It's specifically made for the grand. It's lower pressure. It's a different uh, powder that's used. It has to do with the timing cycle. There's, there's math and physics involved. So please don't ask me to explain it on the radio. I can't explain it anyway. I'm just using that as an excuse. Anyway, so that became the battle rifle in the World War II, but it's still the same cartridge. Lots of ammunition freed up after that. Lots of cases, lots of bullets. People used to buy their powder in eight to 10 pound jugs. Um, I remember stories of the guys telling me that they would go buy powder by the couple of pounds. The guy would scoop it out with like a, a peanut scooper or ice scooper into a paper bag. And this guy would ride his bike home with two pounds of gunpowder, black, you know, smokeless powder from his handlebars heading home to do some reloading. So that's, that was in free America. You know, they probably call a hazmat squad and, uh, you get swatted and the whole thing today. But again, that's, that's just the way that was then. Anyway, so 30 out six became very, very popular and it became popular because of its accessibility, because it did have very good performance for the day. Um, and it also became a very good base for other cartridges because there were so many cases out there. Uh, people began to change things around. So that the 270, one of my favorite cartridges came out of the 30 out six family. So the 30 out six cartridge, if you're watching along on the video here, folks, the 30 out six cartridge is a uh, long tapered cartridge. Now, the reason it's tapered and what, what tapering a cartridge means is at the rear of the cartridge where the primer is, at the rear of the cartridge where the primer is, is the widest portion. And as you go towards the front, it gets narrower. Now, this was used in semi-automatic rifles like the Garand. It was used in machine guns, which had very, very fast action slamming back and forth. So the tapering helped with uh, making sure it loaded when the gun was dirty and extracting. There was, there was less surface area for the cartridge to bind up on. So for ease of, of extraction and ease of running it in a dirty gun in, in uh, dangerous conditions, that's why you had that taper. Now, if you're following along on the video here, um, I have it compared to an Ackley. This is a 30 out six also, but it's what's called a 30 out six improved, where they've actually straightened the walls. They've increased the volume of powder that this cartridge can hold, and it burns more efficiently with that type of a shoulder action uh, angle. Excuse me. So we'll talk about that in a, in a bit here. But the 30 out six was designed for many, many purposes. That base cartridge, the cartridge being the brass part, was used as the father or grandfather and great grandfather of so many other cartridges. The 308 basically came from there. It's a shortened version, basically, not exactly, but basically came from there. The 270, the 25 aught six, obviously is a 30 aught six neck down to 25 caliber. The 243. Um, anyway, I think the, the 280. Um, basically, they're all based off of a 30 out six case. If you hand loaded and you had 30 out six cases with the right material, you could actually reform them into one of these other cartridges. Might take a while, but it can be done. So, very, very versatile, kind of the grandfather of all rifles uh, and long range hunting in America. So, that's the 30 out six for you there. And do, 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 do. so, let's talk about some of the performance. The, the reason that I got on this kick where I wanted to actually defend the 30 out six. And for those of you who know me, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing for me to do <laughs> is to defend the 30 out six. <laughs> Cause I shoot a 270 most of the time. And we always have banter back and forth as to which one's best, but the 30 out six has been around for so long that the official Sammy the Sporting Association of America Manufacturers, whatever, but SAAMI, their classifications for 30 out six uh, is in its original version. But here we are 116 years later. So we're going to talk about how 
you can actually improve your performance of your odd six and what's a fair comparison when we come back right after this. Be clean. All righty, we're there. I saw that one. Okay. Tyler. All right, here we go. Here we go. Spartans, lay down your weapons. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to Firing Line Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman. I hope you're checking us out on our other platforms. Obviously, we are on air on AM 590. You're listening to it right now at uh, one o'clock on Saturday afternoons. And that's a great station all over Southern California. But we also have our YouTube channel. We're on gab.com forward slash Firing Line Radio. So we're trying to get on as many platforms as we can because, well, fake book is fascist book. And we know as it been, we've all been seeing this, they're going to be shutting that down. I imagine they'll be shutting us down whenever they feel like it. I just don't want to be caught unaware. So we're trying to reach out on other platforms. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, Trump's thing when he comes out. Maybe we'll be on that too. It just comes down to how many different places do I want to try and <laughs> upload everything all week long. So we'll try and figure out which one's the winner and, and go with that. Today we're talking about the 30 out six, the venerable old-fashioned, old-man-style cartridge, 30-06. And as I went off the air there, I was, you know, we did some background information on it, and everybody seems to have one uh, or knows of one or your dad has one or your uncle has one or grandpa had one. So the 30-06 is around. It's a very, very popular cartridge because it's, it's done so well. It does a lot of things well. It may not do one thing better than everything else, but it does a lot of things well. And so that's why it's been so versatile. It's 30 caliber. So the diameter of the bullet is 30.308, uh, basically roughly a third of an inch. Okay, not exactly, but that's what roughly is there for. It's about a third of an inch in diameter. And the weight of the bullets that you can shoot out of a 30 odd six vary substantially from around I think you can get a 95 grain in there with a, a round nose if you really wanted to, but uh, normally 110 grains with a Spitzer profile, meaning a pointed bullet, all the way up to about 240 grains um, with a giant, looks like a copper pencil, um, long range bullet. Now the 30 out six can shoot all of them. It's not gonna shoot all of them as the most efficiently of any other cartridge, but it can shoot all of them. The 240 grain bullet is probably going to be going around 2,400 feet a second, pretty slow, but it's a giant lead sled. The 110 grain bullet is probably going to be going at 3,600, 3,700 feet a second, and everything else is going to be in between. But the standard load for a 30 out six, in my experience, has been the 165 grain bullet. Uh, years and years and years was the Sierra 165s. Everybody shot those, the Match Kings or the Game Kings. Um, Hornaday came out with some good, uh, oper good uh, their interlocks back in the 80s. Um, Nozzler's got some good bullets out now. Everybody's kind of stepped up their game. Uh, Cutting Edge has some very good uh, all copper options. They have the 165 grain laser, which has a pretty high BC. It's actually a 510.5. Uh, which is high for a 30 out six mid range bullet. Most of them, like the Sierras and so forth, are in the fours. So they got less gas mileage when you're trying to shoot. It slows down faster, uh, is more affected by the wind than a higher BC bullet. So I wanted to make a comparison here. One of the things I saw online, why I'm, why I'm defending the 30 out six for my buddy Andrew's sake, is people take a look at what. When this cartridge was designed in 1906, these were the specs it should have used. It should have had this caliber, this overall length. It should have been in this twist of a barrel um, and, and had this pressure. Well, everything has changed 116 years later. If you don't believe me, look at the, the phone you're watching this program on, right? So <clears throat> things have changed, but the Sammy cards haven't. That hasn't been updated. So when somebody compares a modern 
designed cartridge to one that's 120 years ago and, and leaves the parameters or the rails of performance on the 120 year old cartridge, as opposed to what it can do today with the equal technology, I find it unfair. So a lot of writers out there are writing these stories about the, uh, let's say the Creedmoor. The Creedmoor just kills the 30-06. You should throw all your 30-06s away. There's no, you know, it's great historical piece, but that's it because they're not, they're not comparing apples to apples. They're taking a 147 grain super high BC bullet for the Creedmoor and they're using a 150 grain um, horrible BC bullet for the 30-06. You know, it's, there are different options you can do. And so what I want to do here is I'm going to share the, my show my screen here on the video, folks. So again, if you're watching this on the YouTube, you'll be able to see I did a couple of comparisons here just so you can understand what's involved in this. So first off, I want to show you what's available in 30 caliber. So this particular page that I'm showing on online here, folks, is for lasers. This is the cutting edge bullet selection for 30-06. Uh, 30 caliber, it has a 180 grain bullet with a BC of 575. Now that's pretty darn good for a uh, 30 caliber bullet. For their uh, MTH, their hunting bullet, their 30 caliber actually has a BC of 510. Yeah, the BC is 510 for the 165 grain bullet. Now I've used this MTH bullet exclusively until they came out with the laser. It's, it's a heck of a bullet for very accurate. So my point is you have the ability to get a high BC bullet in the ranges of for a 30-06 that are going to be very, very good. Also the 180 grain laser is a BC of 575. So um, let's go here. Yeah, BC is 575 on that. So you have the ability to get a high BC bullet and high ballistic coefficient bullet. So you can shoot the bullet, shoot the rifle farther, shoot it faster, shoot it more accurately over long range distances, which is really what everybody's kind of getting into now. Everybody wants to shoot super long ranges and make some fantastic hits and, and life would be good. So I went to the Vortex ballistic calculator. Now I like this Vortex ballistic calculator. Uh, it's simple to use. It's been pretty accurate in my experience and it prints up nice charts for me to look at. So I did a, your typical 30 out six, uh, with 165 grain bullet BC of 510 muzzle velocity, 2,900 feet a second, very standard, nothing tricky there. Sighted it in at 225 yards. And let's just take a couple of, of looks here. And at 500, let's see here, let's go to 500. At 500 yards, okay, it's still going 2,200 feet a second. It's about a 6.7 minutes of correction, and it has almost 1,800 foot pounds of energy. So that's pretty good. That really is. That's, that's really good, 500 yards. So let's flip over here. This was the, sorry about this. Okay, so this is the Creedmoor. So I took a Creedmoor, the BC of 625, muzzle velocity of, one of 2,800, which is right in their wheelhouse, um, 140 grain bullet. And if we look at their 500 yards, they're at 2,242 uh, feet a second, 6.9 minutes, and 1,562 foot-pounds of energy. So a little bit less energy, about the same drop, right? When you compare apples to apples, about the same drop. And if we go over to the, gosh darn it. <laughs> well, let me do that. All right. So if we go over to the 180 grain bullet, sorry about that, folks. I hate choppy radio as much as you do. So go to the 180 grain bullet at 2,800 feet a second. This is right out of the uh, Sierra loading manual. Nothing man magical out of that. And they're not, they're not even that fast. But here you would have 2,200 feet a second, roughly seven minutes, just about as flat as the, as the 140 Creedmoor and 1,900 foot pounds of energy at 500 yards. So for most hunting distances, the 30-06 with the properly, a properly matched barrel, a properly matched bullet for what we're trying to do, you're going to have almost the identical uh, flight path of a Creedmoor, and you're going to have more energy out there. 
Now you don't hear that very often and you don't hear it from people trying to sell new cartridges, but that's just the way that works. Um, they have, they have a bit of an agenda there. So you're 30 out six with a 20, well, let's talk about how we can improve, improve the performance also. Now it, to be honest, it's not a surprise that a large action cartridge would outperform a short action cartridge. The Creedmoor is very efficient. They've done a good job designing it. And, you know, it's, it's right next to a 30 out six with less powder. So that's fantastic. I'm not trying to take anything away from that. I'm just saying that when you look at the actual numbers, I want you to be advised and know that, hey, if I have a 30 out six and I can't afford to go get a Creedmoor, I can still do whatever it does by loading the right bullets, like under, getting an understanding of what the true capabilities of my rifle that I have are. And that's, that's kind of really, it's a freeing thing. We're going to talk about how to actually improve your rifle if you have a few extra ducats and, uh, you know, you keep in the shekels in an extra bag and you can uh, put those together. Then we'll talk about how to improve it, take it one step even farther. So folks, this is Philip Naiman, an unusual show for me defending the 30-06. Those of you who know me know why I say that. But um, hey, somebody has to do it. Uh, we'll be right back after this, firinglineradio.com. All right, ready to roll into the next segment? Nope, I need to top this coffee off. Oh, drug of choice. With my civil wear. Civil wear. That's another sponsor we can talk about. Those guys. Matter of fact, uh, uh, civil wear. One of the guys involved there, Jake um, Franklin, local boy, made good. He's actually an outdoor life. Um, you know, he's a big time sheep ram hunter, sheep ram hunter. If you're hunting sheep, I hope you're hunting rams. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited about getting my new coffee. So it's all, I'm all flustered on that. But uh, he's an outdoor life. I did a big article on him. He's taken 100 rams for hunters. Uh, he's got some monsters in California. They got the world records. He hunted with a guy from uh, Jason from Kuyu, got him that giant Goliath ram. I think they just took another record this year. Just amazing stuff that he's doing. So very excited about that. So there you go, civil wear. And, and they make they make the knives I took to Alaska, no doubt. And then I came back and I cleaned two elk, three elk. I cleaned two elk with, uh, with a small knife, <laughs> the little packer knife. So skinned them too, not just clean them, skinned them. And that's, that's where all the work is. All right, we're on four, let's go, baby. Yes! Great hunter. Yes? yes? Fine figure of a man. Yes? Yes? Yes. That is all you need to know for now. Do you own a 30 out 6 Yes? Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. This is your show. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, I actually, so we're in the fourth session here, folks. So I actually have to come clean. I did not own a 30 out six until recently. That's right. Um, and it's a grand. So uh, as it went through the CMP, the civilian marksmanship program, and I got a grand and I'm very happy with it. Um, that's like looking at it. I haven't actually shot it yet, but uh, that, and I do have a specialized rifle that shoots 30 out six that um, it's extremely accurate. And I can't wait to get out and hunt with that. But if 30 out six is actually a new, a new collection for this old man, which is kind of unusual, but that's the way life works. Okay, so we're talking about justifications with a 30 out six. Why you have one? If you have one, do you need to throw it away and buy something new? No, no. If you understand your cartridge capabilities, you can really dress this sucker up. It's never going to be a 300 rum, okay? But it's not a slouch. 30 out six is, is a fantastic cartridge all the way around. So let's talk about things you can do. Men, it, let's just say that you inherited grandpa's 30 out six. Okay. And it's, it's sentimental, but he would rather you use it than just look at it in its current condition. So it, as it's sitting there in the uh, Remington 700 uh, BDL 
polyethylene stock on it with all the scratches from when grandpa tripped and went down the hill and the 22 inch pencil barrel is dinged up. It's like, you, you may not want to use it in that fashion. So what you can do is you can keep the spirit of grandpa's rifle alive. You can keep the action. Uh, you'll probably want to replace the barrel. Now, when you're replacing a barrel, obviously proof research is who I'm going to go to, but they have great offerings, not just in the carbon fiber, but also in their traditional steel. So if you have like a, a Ruger rifle, if you have a Ruger, they can get you a pre-fit or a Savage pre-fit. If you have one of the higher end uh, actions, obviously they, they do those also, but you can get a pre-fit barrel for a Savage 110 or a Ruger uh, action. And uh, that will cut down a lot of gunsmithing time and costs. We love our gunsmiths, but they do take their time. You know who I'm talking about. Okay, so the you can change your barrel. Why would you change your barrel? Well, if you're changing your barrel, there's two, th three things to consider. Number one, the profile of the barrel you're putting on. Um, you may not want to have a giant target barrel put on a hunting rifle. Sometimes I do, but I'm weird that way. Um, you also may not want to put a super thin pencil lightweight barrel on it if you're going to be shooting it a lot. So the weight of a barrel, I think for most people, it's called a Sendero weight. It's kind of a medium weight. It's stiff, which you need for accuracy. It has a little bit of weight to it, which can help you in some shooting positions, but you have to carry it. If your gun is too heavy for you, take up golf, okay? Because if you're hunting and you shoot an elk, and your 10 pound gun was too heavy, <laughs> you're gonna hate life. So if your gun's too heavy, take up golf, get a carbon fiber shaft golf club uh, with a hollow head, okay? Um, this is for, this is serious stuff here. You need accuracy is more important than lightweight. So a stiff barrel is very important. We like to proof research either traditional steel, which I have several of, or the carbon uh, fiber barrel. If, if that's in your wheelhouse, I think it's a great way to go because you can get the stiffness of a very heavy barrel without the weight of it. They still weigh something. They're not flyweights, but they're their size allows them to be as stiff as a heavy barrel without carrying an extra three or four pounds of weight on the end of your gut. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing is you may wanna take a look at redoing the stock. A lot of guys love chassis stocks. Um, they're neat. Maybe you don't wanna go space age with a chassis. You'd rather have more of a traditional hunting stock. You know, McMillan makes great stocks. Their MC3 line if uh, for polymer is the way to go as opposed to, you know, the Magpul stock. I like the polymer MC3 much better than I do the other one. And it comes in long action also. So you can, uh, you can change that out fairly easily. You can put a detachable box magazine in if you want. Magpul does make very, very good plastic. Um, high grade plastic detachable box magazine for uh, the lower metal of your rifle. So for Remington 700s. So you can change all that stuff out. All of a sudden you took grandpa's gun. You still have the action of it, which is the spirit of the gun. You've repurposed it with the, the new barrel, new stock. And then obviously you're going to uh, probably upgrade your optics from the uh, four power weaver thin line that grandpa had or the uh, three by nine that uh, your dad had uh, Leopold and you're going to upgrade it to some of what we have today which are just amazing optics the vortex you know my favorite hunting scope is the PST 2 5 by 25 in an MOA and, I, and for hunting, I like second focal plane. If you're just going to be shooting targets, first focal plane is great. They, they have both options. And that's a reasonably priced, great scope. So you've done all that. You can also upgrade your trigger. When you're changing your barrel out, I would get as fast a twist as you can find. So for 30 caliber, you might want to look for a one in nine twist or even a one in eight if that's available. That will allow you, if you ever decide to hand load, to shoot a better caliber of bullet should you decide to do that. It will not stop you from shooting the traditional or standard stuff. It'll do it just fine. But it gives you the option down the road. If you wanted to try and shoot a 240 grain bullet just for fun, you can stabilize it. I just saw a video of a guy shooting his 30-06, 3,300 yards with that bullet. Um, had 265 minutes of elevation <laughs> but but hey 
he threw the bullet out that far. So there's a lot of options you can do with it. And I would, if you're going to rebuild a rifle, I would do it to give you the most options and not, not to just put you into one corner where all you can do is X. So a faster, the faster twist, a one and eight twist, if you can find it for 30 caliber would be fantastic. Now let's talk about the length of the barrel. 30 out six, you're going to be burning 50 plus grains. So a 24 inch barrel is really the minimum size I would recommend. 26, if you can get it, I think is perfect. The longer a barrel is on a rifle, the more velocity you can add up, up to a certain point. For this type of a cartridge, about 26 inches is where you're going to get your most beneficial burn from today's slower powders. Uh, 20 inches, you're, you're going to have a giant fireball. It just, just doesn't work as well. For a 308, you know, 20 inches is okay. Uh, for 30 out six, I would rather see you with a 26 inch barrel. It, you're going to get more velocity and a little bit more balance on the gun also. So the barrel length is important. The twist on the barrel is important. If you're hand loading, your bullet selection is everything. And you're going to be able to, again, check anything from 110 grains, very small coyote ground scroll bullets to a 240 grain, which is a lead sled you're throwing out there. I mean, it looks like a copper pencil, about two inches long. <laughs> it's a giant bullet, but you have that opportunity and, and you're, you're going to have the ability to take it for an elk hunt to take it for a coyote hunt. You want to shoot uh, bears with it. You, you have that. Um, it obviously is, was a military round. So there's all kinds of applications you can use with a 30 out six. The, the deal is understanding what you can do with it, you know, um, and not just reading magazine hype. So uh, if you write a magazine and, um, you have a problem with this, come on the air. Let's talk about this. I would love to have a conversation with you because, you know, I don't want to make anybody feel bad for shooting some. Oh, the other thing I forgot to say, gosh, darn it. I always do this. I'm probably out of time, but you can also improve the chamber. I showed this picture earlier. And so if you are going to redo a 30 odd six, I highly recommend you do what's called an improved chamber. It's also called an Ackley improved or Ackley chamber, but an improved chamber. That's going to add almost 250 feet a second in velocity for free. You can shoot regular 30 out six ammunition in it, and it'll create a, a new case that you can reload at the higher velocities. It, it increases the brass life for whatever reason. It doesn't stretch out. So there's some benefits to that. Uh, you can shoot standard 30 out six ammunition in it. And then you have, it's what's called fire forming. When you load that long tapered cartridge into the Ackley improved chamber and fire it, the pressure pushes the brass out to the new dimension. So it's creating a new cartridge with your old brass. And so I've done that with my 270. I've done it with my 25 out six. My friend Andy did it with his 30 out six. It's an amazing cartridge. Now it's almost as fast as a 300 wind mag out of a 30 out six. So think about that. You just created a magnum alpha standard cartridge and you didn't increase the pressures. Pressures are the same. So it's, it's an amazing new thing, not new, it's a long time, but um, if you're going to redo it, think about improving your cartridges. So that's it. That's my 30 out six show for today, guys. I have done my best to, to help the venerable 30 out six to, to lift up the afflicted, the battered down, the maligned, much maligned in the press uh, cartridges out there. And so that's my deal today. If you have a 30 out six, stand up proud. You're not the schmuck they said you were. I don't think anyway. All right, folks. Hey, check us out on YouTube on gab.com and the Philip Naiman Fireland Radio Show. Have a great day. God bless. Clear? Now you are. Couldn't get the mouse. <laughs> ready for promo? You're still recording. I'm ready for promo. You're ready for promo? I'm ready for promo. Just goes on your end anyway.
I am ready for the promo. Are you ready for the promo? You probably didn't hear me. I said, go away. Go ahead. Okay. He said, go away. <laughs> oh, did I say that? Uh, you I say that, that often to me. I don't know about our love. We, I, we need I, counseling, I think it's, Dan. I think it's brain issues. I need <laughs> yeah, but you didn't say whose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Give let's me. do this. All right, go ahead. Hey, folks, Philip Naiman, Firing Line Radio Show, heard Saturdays at one o'clock. Now, this week, we're going to talk about the venerable, much maligned, 30 out six. If you own one, you want to hear this. If you don't own one, well, you should and find out why Saturday at one o'clock. Also, don't forget next Saturday, January 22nd, help out at the 1N09 cleanup. Find out more on our show Saturday, one o'clock. No. Nope. Find out more on our show, firinglineradio.com. Oh, okay. You can squeeze that in there. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, oh, we'll do. I'll just. I just. I. I contacted uh, the double schedule and told her we needed to reschedule. I don't know what happened. You didn't get on the schedule for some reason. I don't oh. see any emails. Talk. I guess it was just a verbal. That's I think the I problem. You, yeah. Sorry about that. Are we well, okay? I just, I'll just. I'll. I told Opal that she has to record at twelve thirty, but she hasn't responded yet. But we'll make it work because you have record, a. She record next Thursday morning. It's open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's, All right. she's, she's beside herself. She has All right. Hey, we're recording. Out. We're recording. We're recording. All right. God bless. All right. Bye.